Welcome. It is good. It is good to be here. It is good to have you uh, here this morning. And so if you're a guest with us this morning, I want to thank you for being at LifeTrack and welcome you here. Uh, you and I have a lot more in common than you probably realize at this moment because I too am kind of a guest here this morning. My name is Doug Betts and I am uh, the pastor at LifeTrack and I'm excited to be here, but this is my first official Sunday. Um, so I'm learning things and... Um, but it is good. It is good. So uh, if you are a guest with us this morning, um, if you'd like to learn more, I'd love to visit with you because I, too, would like to learn more as we go through this. Um, I, I just want to take and, and first uh, introduce you to my family. Um, this is a picture of my family that's taken at my oldest daughter, Allie's wedding. Um, and so from left to right, obviously, that's me next to me is my wife, Dina. Uh, we've been married a little over 24 years. Um, and then next to her is Landon, that is my son-in-law, um, and his wife, my daughter, Allie, it's our oldest. They live in Joplin. Landon will be a junior at Ozark uh, this fall. Allie just graduated from Ozark in December. She is um, in her first semester of grad school. Uh, next to her is um, our daughter, Lauren. Uh, Lauren right now is currently in Alabama where she's serving with a college ministry called Student Mobilization. Um, she's down there as part of the leadership team and spent all summer down there. She will be back towards the end of the summer, so you will probably get a chance to meet her. And then in the fall, she will be back at Kansas State uh, where she will be a junior. And then the last one up there, last but not least, is Tyler. Um, Tyler will be going into the fifth grade this fall at Frontenac. And so um, we're excited. Um, we are, are, are looking forward to what God has for us and for you and for all of us here. But I wanted to uh, introduce you a little bit so you can put a name and a face and, and put those together. So as I talk about my family or as you meet them, um, give you a little heads up on who they are. Uh, this morning, um, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to do, it'll be a, probably a little different maybe. Than, than typical, but I wanted to uh, first share Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. And so I, I want to I want to look at that verse, and um, I want to share my story this morning a little bit with you, help you get to know a little bit about who I am, uh, where I came from, and how God brought us to life track. Um, and, and in doing so, I noticed that I'm going to have to cut out a whole lot uh, because my first run through of this for this morning took a little over an hour. So um, uh, we, uh, we will not be doing that version um, and I'm still paring it down. But I, I just want you to know as I, I share and I'm sure it's much like you and your story of, of how you came to know Jesus and how God has worked in your life. There are so many details that God works um, that as you look back on it, it, it's it's unbelievable for us. It's hard for us to understand, um, but God. And so there are a lot that I won't be able to share, but through the course of time, as we um, continue to spend time together, and 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 I would love to hear your stories and, and continue to share mine, but but I hope that, um, that I'm able to share a lot more in details of different things um, and just how God has worked in my life. But this morning... As, as, I, as I share with you and, and look back and reflect on what God has done, um, it's really easy in hindsight to look back and see where, where God's word was saying to me in all of these instances to, to trust him and to not lean on my own understandings, which is so easy for me to do. And it's, it's where I revert to in a lot of cases. And so um, I want to thank uh, the leadership team. I want to thank the church. I want to thank you. Um, if you've been here, I know uh, as a church plant, you guys have gone through a lot in, in the last uh, several years um, and just the challenges and things that you faced as a church. And it's exciting to see the remnant that God has here uh, with that and, and what he will do with that. But I know there has surely been challenges. There's been difficult times um, planning a church, starting a church, growing and, and going from, from where you started to where you are now and the challenges in that, the challenges that COVID presented, the challenges of just transitioning through staff. And so I know that life presents us lots of challenges um, and I can look back at my life and, and as I see the challenges 
that, that God has put in my life, I know that in those, we should trust the Lord and, and not lean on our own understandings. And when we acknowledge him, he will make straight our path, our life track, if you will. Um, and so I want to just share a little bit um, of my story and, and how God brought us to life track. And so I, uh, I did not grow up in a, in a Christian home. My, my dad does not um, and did not believe in God. He's not an antagonistic atheist. He's just kind of an apathetic atheist. He just doesn't care. He doesn't believe and he doesn't care, um, which are good things and not so good things because it was positive from a sense of if I wanted to go and explore what I believed about faith, he's like, totally fine. I don't care. You do what you want. And that was kind of his attitude. Uh, my mom, on the other hand, my mom believed that there was a God, um, but she just didn't know who he was. She didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And um, so I was born, my dad was 21 when I was born. My mother was 14. Um, there were a lot of challenges, um, as you can imagine. At that time, my parents did not have much money. Um, both of them uh, left before they finished high school. My dad went to Vietnam. And my mom dropped out of school as a freshman because she was pregnant with me. Uh, they had a lot of people speaking into their lives about the choices that they should make. Uh, most of them suggested an abortion would be the best option considering their circumstances and the difficulties that they would have raising a child and all the challenges that would come with their youth and their inexperience and their lack of finances and everything. Um, but my parents chose life. Um, which is another story um, that is an awesome story that I will share with you at some point. But they they chose life. And my mom um, told me, I, I actually had an opportunity to share this at a pregnancy center um, banquet several years ago. And I was visiting with my mom leading up to that, just getting some information and talking. And, and she shared with me that I didn't know this, that that before I was born, and she had lots of people speaking into her about what she should do, um, she said a prayer. And she didn't really know who she was praying for is more like a plea to God. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this baby, but I need your help. And I want you to do something good with this child. And so that was, was kind of her prayer. So she had me, her and my dad got married um, and they raised me. And growing up, um, man, we moved a lot. Um, my parents had a lot of different jobs, a lot of different challenges, um, as we moved around and just went through, and life was not always easy. Um, a combination of circumstances, things that happen for different reasons, and a combination of choices. Their choices, my choices, made it difficult at times growing up. And as I, as I grew up, um, got into high school, uh, my parents and I did not really see eye to eye. We um, ended up splitting. My parents got a divorce when I was a sophomore in high school, and I moved out completely from either of my parents' houses. Um, we just did not get along. And there was a period of time, years, where we didn't speak. Um, I moved into a friend of mine's house. Um, he had a, a mom who was a single mom raising four other kids. And then she accepted me in to their household. And I finished high school living with them. And, and as I look back at things, and this was just one moment, where God put people in my life. And, and there were times where God was directing me and guiding me as I was younger, where he would give me opportunities to learn about who he was, um, to be a part of a church. I went to several different churches with different friends and families, um, lots of different denominations, but I never really stuck in any of them. I had lots and lots of experiences. Uh, got into high school, my parents divorced, I moved out, I graduated, and I just kind of struggled my way through getting to college, um, and, and I continued to make lots of not great choices, um, do things that were far, far, far from God's will for me in my life, um, and I was a long ways away from God. I would tell you at that point that I was a Christian, but I did not know Jesus. Um, I was not close, but I, I would tell you that I was. I met a girl, um, she was kind of cute, she was fun. Um, she was, uh, I, I like to be around her. And so, um, but we were way different. Her and I were not alike in a lot of different ways. And um, she went to church. I did not. Um, so she was Catholic and I had been to a Catholic church 
I had, that was one of mine that I cycled through. And so I had some experience. I thought, man, I can impress her if I go to church. And so uh, I began to go to church and it worked. Apparently, um, I asked her to marry me and she eventually said yes. Um, I don't know. I have no answers for that except God. Uh, but, but she did say yes. We did get married um, and we continued to uh, go to church very faithfully. Every week we were at church. We were super consistent. And I would tell you again, I was a Christian. I, I believed that there was a God. I looked around at creation, and, and I, I could not imagine there not being a God. And I went to church, so that made me a Christian, right? Um, I, I tell you, um, going to church, being in a church, doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in a garage makes you a car. It, it doesn't. You're not. And I wasn't. Um, I was far, far, far from God. In fact, going to church for me was just checking off the boxes. It was a matter of doing what I felt obligated to do every week. I was not growing. I did not know God. I was just there to check boxes. And I did that for over a decade, well over a decade, just checking the boxes. And then one day I, um, I had an insurance agency and did real estate on the side. And, um, and I had a house for sale it was listed across the street from us. And I had a guy call me, wanted to look at the house. And uh, we talked. He was from Branson, actually. But he would be traveling through our area on Sunday. He wanted to give me a call. And, hey, when I'm there, can I just call you? And then we go look at the house when I'm coming through. And so I said, yeah. And then I had to have a conversation with my wife. And I said, you know, Sunday this guy's coming through, wants to look at a house. He's just going to call me. Um, since Catholic Church is 15 miles away, can we just go to the little Bible church that's like three blocks away for that Sunday? And so I had to um, convince her. It took some convincing, but eventually she said yes. And so that Sunday we went to that Bible church and um, we went in and, and I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, I think back over my life and I'm not sure I ever heard the gospel. I'm sure that the gospel was presented to me, but I don't think I ever heard it. And Anyway, I remember sitting in that church and hearing things that I, I didn't know. And, and I remember walking away from that, that Sunday, thinking to myself, where am I leading my family? Am I leading my family to God or am I leading my family to hell? Like, it was a heavy weight on me. And, and we got home and we, we talked as a family. God did something in each one of us that morning at that church. Um, he, he <laughs> spoke into us, both my wife and I, like, okay, something's going on. We need to pray. And so we prayed as a family for the first time ever together about what God wanted us to do. If we should continue to go to this Bible church or if we should go back to where we were or what should we do? And so we prayed and we all felt like God was calling us to continue in this Bible church. Funny story. Um, that guy never called. Ever. He never called. I, I don't even know what happened to him. I never heard from him again. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. But um, I, I had planned to, you know, get the call and sneak out of church and go sell a house. That was my whole plan. And it never happened. He didn't call. But but God did, I feel. And so we continued to go to the church. Um, I began a, a process of just studying scripture and, and reading the Bible and, and trying to learn as much as I could about who God is, studying different denominations and different religions and, and the history and, and, and everything that I could about Jesus. And it became clear to me through everything that I read, everything that I studied, every experience in my life that Jesus is God. And there was a day in, in church, um, in that little Bible church, I remember where I was sitting, about three rows in front of the sound booth. Um, I have no idea what happened else that service. But me and God, me and Jesus had an encounter. And, and I gave my life to Jesus and I committed to living for him. I had spent my entire life living for me. Um, but I knew, I knew that there was a God. I knew that it was Jesus and that he was calling me to live for him. And so I gave my life to him that day. We um, began to serve in the church in various ways. One Sunday, uh, I had been playing softball that Sunday afternoon and evening. There was a youth event at the church. After softball, I thought, well, I'll just drive by and check it out. Um, it looks kind of fun. And so I did. And they were playing mud volleyball. 
which sounded awesome. So I went and, and I was checking out and I was invited to, to help a little bit with the event. And then the pastor said to me, you know, you should really help with youth group. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I would love to, but I play softball every Sunday. So Sunday nights just don't work for me. Um, sorry, any other night of the week would have been great, but not Sundays. He's like, that's great because our junior high meets on Wednesday. I was like, what time? So I began serving in uh, junior high ministry, and I really didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't sure why I was doing it, but I felt God was calling me to it. I did not understand, but at that point, I was just trusting God. And so I began to serve, and God began to use me. He began to form me and mold me and shape me into who he was creating me to be, who he had created me to be. And, and so I served as a, as a volunteer, and then I was asked um, a few months later if I would oversee the junior high ministry, and then a few months later if I would oversee all of the ministry, um, so junior high and senior high. Uh, I was asked then later if I would take on this as a part-time job. Now, I'm, I own an insurance agency. I sell real estate, and now I'm doing part-time ministry. Um, I'll be honest. I don't think part-time ministry exists I don't think that's a real thing. Um, I began doing it, and I was struggling. I wasn't doing all three, any one of them well, but I was trying to do all three. And then the church approached me and asked me if I would be a full-time youth pastor. And in my mind, this made no sense. I, I did not understand because I, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't go to Bible college. I didn't go to seminary. I wasn't qualified. But God was definitely calling me. And so I had to answer, but I didn't understand. And, and I trusted God. I accepted the position. Now I'm doing essentially three full-time jobs. And it wasn't working. It wasn't working at well. So I had to make a decision. Um, and I decided that I would quit real estate. And I would sell my insurance agency. And I would just become full-time in ministry. And so that's what I did. And I, I served at Bennington Bible Church for six years Ministry was going so well. It was incredible. We, we were a little Bible church in a town of 600 people, and, and we peaked out at over 100 students every week. I mean, it was amazing the things that God was doing in their lives and how he was working. And um, so in all of this, one of my favorite moments in, in all of my time at Bennington Bible Church, um, I had been baptized into the Catholic Church. I had to do that in order to marry my wife in the Catholic Church. Um, but that baptism didn't mean anything to Jesus. Like that baptism was to get married. That's why I got baptized. And so I wanted to be baptized again. And so um, at the church, we would have a, a day of baptisms and we would pre-record testimonies. We would share them before the baptism. And so I was getting baptized. My oldest daughter, Allie, was getting baptized that day and a few other people as well. We pre-recorded all the testimonies. When we went to play them, all of them worked except mine. And so I had to give my testimony live that morning, um, which I did. Um, and there were friends and family and lots of people there. And so I shared my testimony. Um, I was baptized, and I was able to baptize my daughter, Allie. And, and then we opened up, and we just gave an offer to the congregation, to anyone who would profess a faith in Jesus and want to be baptized to come and be baptized. And it was amazing. We baptized over 30 people that morning. It was pretty incredible. And I, I will remember my favorite one personally. I'm down in the water in our baptistry, and I could see out into the congregation. And coming down the aisle uh, was a lady who I knew very well, my mom, who had been there to watch um, me and my daughter be baptized. A and she came up, and we met. I came out of the water, and we hugged, and we cried, and we apologized. Um, and it was an incredible reconciliation that God had been doing between her and I through lots of difficult years that he was bringing us back together, but even more so a reconciliation that he was doing with her and him. And so I baptized my mom that day. There's a picture of me and Allie and my mom. Um, my mom, probably not her favorite picture in the world. Um, she was decked out in her church clothes and she had no intentions of getting wet that morning, but, but Jesus had other ideas. It was an incredible, incredible day. Um, 
obviously for her, but for me as well to be a part of that. And, and me being me, uh, the next morning I called her up and I said, hey, can we get breakfast? Um, and so we went and met for breakfast. And I'm like, okay, you do understand. Like, did you give your life to Jesus? Like, you're living for, like, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I got this right and I understand fully. She's like, yes, yes, yes. And I'm like, okay, all right, let's go. Um, and it was just, it was the beginning of an incredible relationship that God completely transformed and the things that we did together and talked about and 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 grew in our faith and understanding of Jesus was was awesome and so so thankful to have that opportunity lots of good things were happening and then one Saturday the pastor called me into his office and he said Doug we made a decision the church wants to go in a new direction we're letting you go what I I, I why? Well, it's, I don't understand. And I didn't. And I was never given a, a real reason or understanding other than they wanted to go in a, in a new direction that didn't include me. I don't know what that direction was. Um, and I have no idea why. Um, I was allowed to, to have a last opportunity to speak to my students, which is, again, another incredible story that I will share at some time later. Um, and then I was and then I was done. And I was lost, and I was confused, and I did not understand at all. I had a lot of hard questions and conversations for God and with God about why. And, and I'm sure that many of you can relate as challenges that you go through why God becomes a, a big question a lot of times. And I didn't understand why, God, why would you bring me into ministry, do all of these incredible things, and then have it end like this? I don't understand. This makes no sense. Now what? Now what do I do? Do I go back to insurance? I had a couple opportunities to go back there, but I didn't feel called to that. I felt called to ministry. And so I prayed a lot and, and I still didn't understand. But as I look and reflect at God's word, it, it, it's not my understanding that I need to lean on. It's, it's trusting in the Lord with all my heart. Because the Bible is clear and tells us, like, like, God works good through all things for his glory and those who love him. And, and, and we don't always see it. We don't always understand, but we can always trust. And so um, I didn't always do that well. So in that process, um, I began to look at ministry opportunities. There was a couple. There was one church that was really close to where we lived. Big church, just in a multi-million dollar expansion on their youth center. Um, Lots of things happening, sounded really good. We wouldn't have to move. That's the position that I wanted to go and serve. I was excited about that. But my wife texted me another position that was in a little town called Beloit. I was born in Beloit. I spent third or fifth through seventh grade in Beloit. I was familiar with Beloit. I had a lot of family who didn't know Jesus that lived in Beloit. My reply to my wife was, nope. I do not want to go to Beloit. Um, I'm going to Salina, and I'm going to serve in this church. And so I began the interview process. And in the first interview, it went really well. But he said, look, I, I don't know how long this is going to take. Um, we're probably looking at several months before we make a decision. I knew I didn't have several months because I needed to be doing something. And so um, I reluctantly also applied to Beloit and began that interview process. I went through both of them at the same time. Um, in Salina, the church that I wanted, um, in my plans, uh, I had gotten down to the final. It was between me and, and one other guy for that position. And I was really excited about, okay, God, this is it. This is going to work out. This matches all of my plans and all that I want. Um, but I also had gotten to my third interview at Beloit and it became very clear to me that that is where God was calling us. Um, after my third interview, they offered me the position. And so I sat down with my family. We prayed. We talked. We all felt God was calling us to the church we didn't want to go to. None of us wanted to go to that church, but that's where we felt God was calling. And so we accepted the position. Ha, I didn't understand, but I was trusting God. Sometimes I can do that well. Sometimes I can't. Um, I began to trust, and, and we began to serve there. And, and it has been seven years that I served at the Beloit First Christian Church. Um, God has done some incredible things in ministry and, and really working in students and in children there and grow, growing um, and, and just 
it, it was awesome to watch and see and be a part of. And so while ministry was going great, our personal lives, like the, 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 the decision at Bennington was difficult. And, and it was just the beginning of a lot of difficult things that began to happen personally for me and my family. Um, in November of 2019, I suffered an ischemic stroke about the size of a postage stamp at the base of my brain. Um, I was in the hospital. I had lost basically the ability to do everything that I knew how to do. Well, at least. Um, I couldn't talk without slurring. I couldn't walk. I had to wear a sticker that said, um, fall victim. I, I was a victim of the fall, yes. And I was also um, very, very uh, endangering myself whenever I would walk because I had no balance. Um, I had to relearn everything. So basically, that part of my brain was wiped out. It was gone. Everything that I learned through that part, which was pretty much everything, I had to relearn using different aspects of my brain. I had to relearn in different ways. I had to relearn how to walk, how to talk, um, how to swallow. Um, I don't know if it's that, that the stroke has given me an extraordinary excessive amount of saliva or if I just don't know how to swallow it right, but that seemed to happen. Like all of these challenges um, were really hard for me and difficult. And I remember uh, as a family event, my nieces were there and they wanted to play catch with me. I, I played a lot of sports growing up, pretty active guy. Um, I know how to throw. Right, and so we had a little foam ball, and they were from me to you, and and I would try to throw it, and it would end up over there, or over there, or right there. I couldn't throw. Like how awful is this? And I'm I'm questioning God. I am in a dark place in my life because I don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of unknown, and I just don't understand. Everything I do, okay, God, now I'm really confused. Like, okay, you, you, you call me into ministry. I spent six years in Bennington. Ministry does awesome, and then you ended it that way, and, and then you bring me here, and now I've been here for two years, and now I'm facing this. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to talk right again. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to stand and share with people again. I, I have no idea. I don't understand. And I look back at God's word, and I didn't need to understand. I just needed to trust him. And he began to work in different ways, to do different things. I went back um, in January of 2020. I, I was full-time back at the church. Now, I was not remotely close to what I had been, but I was back working. And I was I was slower here and physically. Um and there were lots of challenges that came with that. And, and, and when, everybody, when anybody asked me what that was like, it was kind of like this. It's like if, if somebody took a giant cup full of molasses and put it over me, and I was just walking around in that that entire time, everything was slow and hard and separated from everyone else. It was really difficult. It was really challenging. But God kept working and doing things. Um, but of course, 2020, you know what came next. Um, not long after I had gone back and I was kind of making process, COVID hit. And we shut down as a church. We were unprepared. We were not live streaming. We didn't have anything at all ready for what was happening, as I'm sure you guys were much in, in a lot of the same boat. But it was just really different, and it was really hard. And I tried to do a Zoom youth group message. I remember there's a picture of me that somebody took from behind. And I've got like, I don't know, five screens and a phone and two iPads and all these things. And we're on Zoom and Instagram and Facebook and all these different things trying to stay connected. Because how do you do ministry with people when you can't meet with people? You can't. You can't. You have to be together. And so that was an extremely hard a time in ministry. And we're, we're working through that. And, and there was a moment in that, and I don't know exactly what it was other than God. That's my explanation for a lot of things. Um, but it's true and it's real in which God snapped me out of that cup of molasses. 
And and I, I, I just remember like one morning I woke up and I felt good. And, and God really began to get me back to where I was. I, I still have challenges that I've gone through um, and I still have challenges that I go through now even. Um, but God, God broke me out of that. And so we're, we're going through COVID. October of 2020, I got COVID. <clears throat> I spent a month in my basement separated from everyone. Um, I go, oh, here we go again. Why, God? I, I don't understand. I, I was just getting back. Things are going good. And bam, I don't understand. I don't have to understand. I have to trust God. And so um, I didn't learn that all well, and I am still learning that, but that's what he kept pointing us to. And so after, um, after that, I, I came back, um, spent a month in my basement, but began again working back. And so I want to share with you just in a little over a two-year period um, from December of 2018 into 2021, um, I had 14 family members pass away. During this time that, that COVID is happening, during the time that I've had my stroke, 14 of my family passed away. Um, their ages varied from the youngest, my cousin Ian, who had just graduated high school. He was 19. He had been a part of our youth group, and he died in an auto accident. To the oldest was my grandfather, who was in his 90s, who had lived a life well, and lots in between. Cousins, aunts, uncles, my grandpa. February 2021, my mother passed away. 63 years old after a battle with COVID. And if you guys are familiar and you remember what COVID was like, as she was passing away, I got to go and stand on the other side of a wall with a window and watch my mom pass away. I'm thankful that I was there. I would have loved to really be there. It was hard. But I'm telling you, the best part of that is knowing where she is. Knowing she had a relationship with Jesus, that she knew Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And I look back and I think about, holy cow, what God has done. Allowing me to come and to be born to a 14-year-old mother who didn't know God. And to work through our lives together and to give me the opportunity to share Jesus with her, to baptize her. And to be a part of all of that and to know that she spent an eternity in heaven with Jesus is, is awesome. But it was hard. It was challenging. In that time, um, my oldest daughter, Allie, has what's called polycystic kidney disease. Um, there is no cure for that. Uh, eventually, she will have to have a kidney transplant um, or, or she will pass away. In fact, one of my uh, cousins passed away from um, PKD. And so she is struggling with that. And in, in uh, I think it was 2022, um, trying to get my years ag again, right? I I'm in Colorado at a retreat. She lives in Joplin. We have insurance in Kansas, so she needs to go to an emergency room. But in order to have it paid for, she needs to come to Pittsburgh. And so she and her husband drove from Joplin to Pittsburgh. Case of emergency, something was going on. I'm in Colorado. I don't have so cell phone service coverage. I don't know what's going on. They spent a week back and forth, in and out of the emergency room. I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going to happen to her. Um, all of the challenges with that and with her health, and, and I'm beginning to really, like, okay, God, like, I, I get when things happen to me. I'm okay with that. Like, I, I mean, okay as I can be. It's difficult, but it's me. But when things start to happen to my kids, it's really hard. And then our middle daughter, Lauren, her senior year of high school, she began to have pain and, and, and she began to lose weight. And when she would eat, she would have excruciating pain. She would be balled up in the fetal position on the floor, crying, hurting. And we went to doctor after doctor and it's like, oh, it's just anxiety. Like They didn't have any answers. They didn't know what was going on. Like we went through her whole summer after her senior year. She was planning for college. She was preparing to go to K-State, and now this was happening. She can't get out of bed. She is so hurting. She's lost so much weight. Every time she eats anything, she's just in pain. I'm like, 
I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't have to. I have to trust God. And, and through that process, we found a doctor that had an answer, Crohn's disease. And then that doctor found a surgeon that was able to do surgery two weeks before she went to college, before she was supposed to move into her dorm. The surgery happened. They put her on a medication, and, and they began the process, and she started feeling better. And, and now she's, she's doing really well. But they've got that process, and my other daughter is doing well as well. They're both doing well. But as a parent, when your kids are hurting, when they're struggling, and there's nothing you can do, you have lots of questions, and you ask a lot of whys. And God doesn't always give you the answer, but he does say, trust him with all your heart. And so through all of that, I had to trust him. Through all of this, there were challenges at the church that were happening. Ministry was going well, but there were opportunities and things that I saw where I felt God was stirring in my heart to, to lead and where I could lead. And, and honestly, I began for the first time in, in 13 years of, of doing children and youth ministry, I began to think about leading a church and what that would look like um, because I saw opportunities where it maybe hadn't been done well in the past and, and could be done better. And I think God put me through those experiences to grow me, to shape me, to mold me for this, for here, for now. And through all of this, um, in November of last year, my wife found the uh, position on the website at Ozark, and she sent it to me. She's like, this is interesting. And I, I looked at it. We looked at the website and watched some live streams and thought, this is interesting. This is really intriguing. So I put together a resume, and I sent it to Greg. And I was excited because he responded, actually. That doesn't always happen. But he responded and said, hey, got your resume and forwarded it to the search team. I'm like, sweet. This is, this is exciting. This is good. And then a couple months go by, and I honestly had kind of forgotten about it. Like, it had been a while, and um, with the holidays and everything, and my wife and I are on a walk, and I, I noticed on my watch that I had a call coming from Gerard, Kansas. And I thought to myself, spam. It's all good. Whatever. I don't know anybody from Gerard. Um, and, and as we're walking, I told my wife, she's like, you know, I think Gerard is right by Frontenac. And I'm like, oh, Really? And so I get back, we get back to the car, and I check my voicemail. Sure enough, it was Mike calling and um, wanting to look and, and see about a time for an interview. Like, obviously they could do Zoom, but in person would be much better. Um, it just so happened that very next week, we were planning to come to Joplin to visit our daughter and son-in-law, and it worked perfect for an interview. So on our way to Joplin, which was already planned, we're about five hours away, um, I just stopped and did an interview, and it went well. Um, I left the interview feeling pretty good. I was very thankful. I, I came in a suit. was very thankful to hear that I didn't need to wear the suit. Um, come as you are because this is how I am. And so I told my wife, I, I, it went good. I think maybe, maybe God is calling us to Life Track, to Frontenac. And so we went, and we enjoyed our time. And um, then I got a follow-up call. We'd like to do a second interview. And we're looking at this day and this day, and this is kind of what we're looking at. And it just so happened that I was coming down to Joplin for the preaching and teaching convention at Ozark that same week. And so, again, on my way through, I stopped and did an interview. The timing was incredible. It was God's. And, and I left that interview, and I called my wife, and I said, I'm pretty sure God is calling us to Life Track, to Frontenac. And we went, I went and spent the rest of um, that week at the preaching and teaching convention. When it was over, I was meeting with Allie and Landon at a crazy llama. Um, I was a little bit early, about 30 minutes. I had a banana, and I thought, I'll just go in and throw it away. I, I th thought about taking a walk, but decided I'd go in and, and just throw it away. And so I went in and was going to throw it away and sit down. Went in, threw it away, and I saw two friends of mine who were pastors um, who happened to be in there. Um, and so I went up, and, and I began talking with them, uh, Jeff and Aaron. Uh, Jeff is in a pastor group that I text weekly. Uh, we text back and forth just encouragement and prayers for one another. And so he was well aware of what was happening here. And so the first thing he asked is like, hey, what's the situation with LifeTrack? How's that going? And Aaron had no idea what was happening. He asked me, LifeTrack in front neck? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at that. He's like, oh, yeah, I I'm really familiar with that church. 
Um, in fact, he said he put up some drywall in this church, apparently. I'm like, whoa, that's exciting. He knew Tim really well. And, and so we began to talk, and he began to share things, and he began to encourage me. And I left after meeting with Allie and Landon, and I called my wife. I said, God is calling us to Life Track. Like, this, this is happening. I was convinced at that point, too many things lined up. This is where God wanted us. And so um, we went through, eventually, leadership made the decision, and I am so glad that you felt the same thing that we felt. Um, I know that for a long time, you guys have been praying for someone, you just didn't know who. Well, you can rest assured, my, my family and I, we've been praying for a long time for some place. We just didn't know where. But the who and the where are right here. Like God has put us on the life track. For, and so I am super excited about the opportunity that we have together to, to be epic and, and to see what God will do. Um, I, I am certain that all of these challenges that both you and we have had, God is preparing us for something big that he has planned. He is preparing us for his purpose, for his glory, for his good, and for the good of those who love him. And so I am super excited to uh, be a part of this with you. And so I would just like to pray. Um, I want to thank you again, um, and I look forward to hearing your stories, to sharing more of our stories, and, and to growing together as we are all on, on the life track that God has for us. Let's pray.